Um, we just met, didn't play. Um, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast. Uh, this is when Christian Speed Talk Radio. Amen. This is Project Night Joy, part two. I'm your host, Reverend Ray, and Reverend Pat is joined by me, with me. Amen. Reverend Pat, are you there? Amen. 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 I'm going. You know what, Reverend Ray? I'm going to press this button and see if we can get He's the Way by Doc Pearson to at least play. And there we go. Evangelist Lewis 
uh, McElwain. Did I get that right? You're pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dang. You know, I have I have pr- pronounced your last name. Well, Evangelist Mac. Evangelist Mac is on on the air with us tonight. Glory to God. And he is the co-founder and president of Thirst No More Corporation, and it's a non-profit humanitarian organization. And what they do is they address community-related services in developing nations. And they've done things such as uh, over in the Democratic Republic of, of Congo, they've been involved in renovating a school and providing a centralized water system in the village community of uh, Nadula, Nadala. Actually, Udalu. Undalu. Oh, okay. Now you got the accent and everything. Go, go in African <laughs> army. And, I've been there many uh, times. <laughs> so, amen, amen. So those are the kinds of humanitarian projects that Thirst No More Corporation um, is involved in. Um, he was with us um, over a week ago, and uh, so he started his testimony, and we were actually almost to this final episode it it you know when i listen to it it's like a novel the, your your testimony is like a novel are you writing this story <laughs> well, uh, let me tell you something. Back, first of all <laughs> you, gave, you gave me a hesitation there <laughs> well, <laughs> well are no, you I writing this you, story i think that you're being very generous um uh probably would be uh, uh, identified more as being long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, it, I'm telling you, it, it it sounds it sounds like a book to me. Okay. Amen. Amen. It, it, yes, it sounds. <laughs> it, I'm telling hey, you, it sounds hey, like Pat. a book. Yeah. Reverend Pat, look, I'm sorry, Evangelist yes. uh, Mike. It sounds like a book to me, man. So that's two, that's all, that's two, or, or, two or more witnesses right there, Jack. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and basically, you you you've already started the process. All you need to go, you need to go back, listen to the podcast, okay, and record what you said. Record what you said. Amen. For an hour, at least an hour. You got yes. an hour of dialogue about your life story. Amen. Right. It's recorded. Amen. It's recorded. Yeah. How uh, easy a, is that? Yeah, well, I tell you, as a quick aside, um, uh, you know, if you identify me as the co-founder of Thirst No More Corporation, then there's another co-founder. Um, his name is actually Paul Davis. And okay. uh, we were talking uh, after – the broadcast, and um, uh, he happened to mention that, wow, she really let you just go for it. (laughs) 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 But I told him, but I told him, I told him, I said, look, uh, I may not be able to tell anybody else's story, but I can certainly tell mine. (laughs) That's right. That's right. And you should be able to tell your story. Yeah. I do want I do Lord. want to add now we do have what they call a trans what is a transcription service for Blog Talk. <laughs> if, you <actually> <laughs> if you actually need it, just let me know now. Look, man, wow. just let me know. You just just when you when you finish it and you put it together, just say I want to, just give us a shout out on We're Christmas Speed Talk Radio. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I'll, I'll take you up on that. And since you all are in the giving mood tonight, uh, hey, if ever there's a need for another broadcast, maybe I would just try to learn what you guys are doing, and then I can sit back while other people get to share the the greatness and goodness of our Lord. How about that? Oh, okay. hey, amen. Did you hear that? Now, did I you hear that. that, Reverend Ray? <laughs> We got now. That's, that's on recording now. We can play that back. Recording. That's right. It's recorded. Okay. It's being recorded, Jack. Right. There's two witnesses and a recording. 
Amen. 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 We'll come back with further announcements uh, later in the broadcast. But I want to get into this story. The story that you've been weaving about your life and how God has been ordering your steps and bringing ministries and ministry leaders into your life to help build what he has given you. To, 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 he sent instructors and mentors and, I mean, praise God. I mean, it's a, such a wonderful, a wonderful testament of the faithfulness of God. So, Evangelist Mac, shall we return to the story? Part two. Yes, we can. Part two. Well, <clears throat> I believe that uh, when we last capped off, um, I was talking about some of the uh, things centered around actually tr- trying to actually make this trip. So just to kind of give a very, very, very brief uh, summation, um I was originally supposed to go into Angola, and that opportunity got blocked because of some civil conflict in that area at that point. So basically through the um, ministry that I was uh, uh, able to do this with, uh, they took a group that was already scheduled for the Democratic Republic of Congo, and they added my group that was supposed to be going to Angola and we had a, a, a huge uh, ministry group, and this ministry group involved ministers and uh, congregation members and also musicians. So um, I was originally slated to uh, lead uh, the music ministry for the Angola trip, while my now partner in Thirst No More Corporation, uh, Paul Davis, uh, was doing the same thing over in the Congo. And so uh, we met once they combined the groups, and it was about 18 of us. And so um, I made a deal with uh, Paul and said, hey, I tell you what, you take care of the instrumentation, I'll take care of the vocal work. And so that's kind of how we blended these uh, groups together to just, take on the Democratic Republic of Congo and to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ there. So <clears throat> the story uh, really begins uh, once we actually touched down in the Congo, and we were in the city of Kinshasa, uh, just so you know, uh, geographically. And I'm going to tell you, uh, Reverend Gray, Reverend Pat, that I knew that this was going to be a major experience the minute that they opened the door of the plane and I was able to step out onto the stairway and just experience the African sky. And I just looked up, and I cannot tell you in words, but it just felt like whatever was missing in my life was completed the moment I stepped out that plane. Mm. And, (laughs) you know, it, it was just miraculous. Like, all of a sudden, everything made sense. All of a sudden, I realized that this was not just a trip that I wanted to make, but it was actually by divine order that I would experience this. And suffice it to say that that first trip, which uh, took place in July of 2007, uh, was the springboard to the nonprofit that myself and Paul run to this very day. It all Mm. came about from that trip. And if I can, I'm going to try to condense a lot of things because I know that we are uh, under some time restraints. But um, basically, we were hosted by uh, a pastor. His name is uh, Pastor Eric Mavinga, 
and he is the pastor of Perot de Verte Church, located in Kinshasa. And just for those who don't speak French, uh, Perot de Verte is defined as word of truth. Mm-hmm. And so um, somehow or another, uh, Pastor Mavinga was able to make provision that all 18 of us would end up staying in a compound area uh, in uh, very close to his church. And just to kind of give you the, the basic structure of that original trip is that um, we did a lot of fellowship during the day. We would go to um, AIDS clinics. We went to uh, – a couple of other hospitals. We went to uh, certain family members' homes to be able to just sit and to experience the Congo, not as a tourist, but really as one who is living there, right, in the community. So we did, on that first trip, we did have a few amenities that would not be normal for someone who's living there locally, Um, but Mm -hmm. we still also got an opportunity to experience the country in its true nature, and and that was a key benefit uh, for some of the things that we would do there later on. So anyway, uh, that's what we would do during the day. Then at night, they would take the 18 of us and they uh, split us into smaller groups, and we would go out to various villages to uh, minister to the people in these villages. And I want to make a a really quick observation here, uh, something that I pray will inspire uh, those of us who are on the call tonight and just uh, our country in general, and especially those of us who go to church. Um, I happen to be uh, in a van, and we were going up to one of the village churches, which was up in a mountain area. And I kept seeing all these different people, and they were just on foot, and they were walking up this hill. And I I was wondering where all these people were going, because it was quite a few of them. And as we got maybe about a mile, maybe a mile and a half from this little church, I started to hear um, a praying, and I started to hear all kind of meditations, and I was like, "Wow, what's going on?" Um, And I was I was starting to get excited because I was like, "I don't know what what I'm getting ready to experience." But as we got closer to the church, and when I describe church in this setting, the church is really just uh, a few poles with a roof, so there's no walls. It's outdoors. Right. <laughs> and so so um, as we approached, all I saw were uh, women that were just walking around in in a circle, and they were just praying, and they were just making the atmosphere right for us. You know, they were preparing for the Lord, of course, but they were also preparing to receive us, and they were getting everything together that we might come in and that there would be no hesitation, there would be uh, no trepidation, that, that that we would feel welcome and that we would be able to share freely. And the real interesting thing, you have to really experience uh, parts of Africa to understand this, but in Africa, uh, a lot of times they use uh, plastic chairs in order to have church services, even in their schools in certain mm-hmm. cases. But in this case, the women were holding the chairs up in the air as they were giving praise to God. And I said, wow, oh, my goodness. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm ready. I I, I want to get in and just explore what God is going to do on that night. And uh, suffice it to say, 
we had a wonderful time in the Lord. Um, I actually uh, kind of flipped roles that night, and I was just purely there uh, for musical purposes, and another gentleman by the name of Brian was the one who actually brought the word. But it was it was exciting. Um, and and I, I also want to say this, too, um, because I came in with a Western mentality uh, thinking that, okay, uh, you know, you will probably end up doing like uh, just 15, 20 minutes of praise and worship, 15, 20 minutes <laughs> of the word, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but uh, we had a culture shock to find out that uh, basically uh, we were told that, um, is that all you have? <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> wow. And, <laughs> and of course, I, I didn't know what to do with that one. I'm sorry, I'm going to allow you to speak. I think you're getting ready to say something to me, Reverend Pat. Uh, no, I was, th- I was just thinking, um, because that is our mindset is that we have these uh these patterns of worship that we've designed uh for Sunday service or even even in our midweek services and and we stick to this pattern and uh and it's and it's very common i mean most places most churches that you're going to go into um, you know, worship is going to last about 15, 20 minutes, you know. Yes. And so there, it's rare that you go, you go into a setting where they're, they're worshiping before the word comes forth like an hour or even two hours before the word comes forth. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So... <clears throat> Um, that was my education that the preaching and worship experience was going to be a lot different <laughs> over there. Um, yeah. And it was, actually, it was actually beautiful because um, um, just for the audience, I, I want to say that um, the, this Western culture that we live in is really time-specific, but in the areas of Africa that I have visited, um, they call it Africa time, or at least I call it Africa time, where basically uh, whatever event, it begins when it begins, and it ends when it ends. <laughs> so right. the, the whole time structure is totally different. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so there was a, a, a freeing and a liberation for me who was uh, already struggling with, certain time restraints that we uh, institute in this country. So I really found a place that really was perfectly knit together for me in the way that I worship and the way that I preach. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to throw that in. Um, So for time's sake, let's just say that um, what, you know, we originally went in order to, be a blessing for the people there. And and I have to share what that means in relation to Congo. Congo um, was originally um, ruled by the Belgians. And Mm -hmm. um, I I can't remember what year now, but I want to say 1960, but don't quote me on that. But um, eventually they they, uh, won their independence from Belgium, but then what occurred is a, a problem that's not unlike the African American experience here in the U.S., where you can actually win your freedom, and you can have your freedom papers, but if you've never been taught how to be free, and if you've never been taught how to use the resources that you've been blessed to have, then mm-hmm. what happens is, is that uh, your country eventually reverts back into a state of decay. Mm-hmm. And because there's no uh, real uh, infrastructure, there's no real model for 
uh, how that country, uh, excuse me, country uh, will progress forward in uh, their pro- their process, then what happens is is that everybody's doing their own separate thing and nothing is being accomplished. So in an area, in a country that is rich in minerals and rich in resources and um, food and vegetation and all these things, what we discovered was that most of those provisions were actually being shipped out to other places in Africa and also other places in Europe so that there were rice fields plenty. There are uh, places, you know, where, uh, you know, vegetation is being harvested. But the people who are doing this work are not reaping the benefits economically or uh, as far as substance is concerned uh, because everything is shipped away. And you you have... Uh, a country that on paper is listed as independent, however, there's still very much a dictatorial type of presence. And uh, there's also uh, corruption in the higher levels of government. So basically uh, you have two systems. You have the very rich and then you have the, the very poor, very little middle class. And, in fact, if I can just put this out there just for our listeners, not unsimilar to the things that are taking place in our very own country to this day. So, so yeah. in, the, in the Congo, uh, it's extreme. So uh, case in point, one of the largest um, electric plants in the world is in the uh, region outside of uh, the city of Kinshasa where I was, but it's out there in what's called Boma. And in Boma, uh, there's this big plant, and everybody else, for the most part, but the people in Kinshasa are benefiting from the electrical resources. So what happens is that it's not uncommon at any point of the day that you could have a, a blackout and just everybody lose power. And eventually it comes back and it can, it can black out again. Um, mm-hmm. And so you have that going on. You also have uh, young children who are trying to go to school and get their education, and they're using um, – manuscripts and textbooks that are way outdated and the government will just not fund for these type of provisions, you know, for newer provisions to be given to the children, their future. Okay, so you have that going on. And listen to this. Um, The average cost of education for one child for a full year is about $45. So just for those who wow. are listening, basically for a, 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 a medium kind of dinner or, you know, or outing uh, where we just throw that money into food and entertainment, it could literally take care of a child for a whole uh, semester year, including uniform. So, you know, it's just things to think about um, because these are the kind of things that hit my heart. And I started to realize that I came to uh, give my ministry, but what was really taking place was that uh, from the way that they were living and the conditions that they were living in and the fact that they were ready to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and not ashamed of it at all, and all of a sudden I found out that, whoa, I'm the one who's actually being ministered to. So imagine this. You go to a country that has no uh, sanitation department to speak of, so when you go even into the 
of what you would consider the downtown parts of the country, or at least the main yes. city, that uh, trash is being burnt on the street. People are roasting uh, fish on the street. Uh, people are taking uh, buckets, and when it's raining, they're catching rainwater because there's no guarantee that they're going to get any kind of water from the plumbing because at any time the plumbing can shut down. And, and I can tell you, quick story, um, my first time out, I praised the Lord God that I had a bottle of Deer Park water because I had to literally <laughs> bathe with it one day. <laughs> wow! <laughs> because the water wow. just went out. I mean, out. and and these are these are and these are the things that um, we take for granted, um, you know, in our country. And I think, you know. Uh, uh, Going into other countries and doing um, uh, outreach, missionary work, um, it it opens up your eyes um, to the to the rest of the world and begin to um, expand the way you think because yes. uh, we 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 we've been so comfortable in the in this country because. Um, even um um you know i see people who are homeless who are in better con- homeless over here in this country better than uh some of the poverty stricken areas outside of our country yes let me tell you another story cuz i have many um as I said, we went over to one of the hospitals, and that particular hospital um, had an uh, AIDS section, uh, uh, HIV AIDS uh, clinic and section. And mm-hmm. um, the one image that I can never take out of my mind was that one of the patients there uh, had an IV, but not like the IVs that we have here where, you know, you have the little – stainless steel pole and you have your little IV fluid that's hanging from it and everything's nice and clean and sanitized. Um, Right. This young man was walking around with a wood plank that was uh, bandaged to his arm with the IV um, uh, needle and fluid coming from that and walking around holding the fluid and and bandaged with that plank. Wow. I just want people to understand this, and I want them to also understand at this same hospital, um, it's not like there's, you know, medical insurance. So this is what the hospital does. If you come in and you can't pay, um, you they will actually keep you, even if you're healthy, they will keep you in the hospital until that debt is paid. Mm. Also, um, you know, you can't go to the uh, cafeteria. There's no cafeteria. Um, In fact, there's no food provision at all. So if you don't have family members or a friend that come to actually bring you food, you won't eat. Wow. 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 Okay, just wow. hear what I'm saying. I, I just, hear what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. And, you know, I'm sure that there are other areas where things may be better, uh, but this was the norm for what uh, we experienced on that first trip. So um, this is also an area that um, does not have a postal service. So you can't write letters. If you're not able to actually uh, travel either by foot or by vehicle or what have you, um, you're not going to really get a message through unless you have uh, social uh, uh, technology, you know, computers and things. And even with that, um, it's very difficult sometimes to get uh, a signal in that part of the world. Right. So, right. so th- these these are just a few of the challenges. One other thing, um, 
many of the men are not able to find work, um, and that's partly because of some of the oppression that comes from the government. But interesting enough, uh, many of the women actually not only take care of home, but they also are able to provide economically by whatever trade they may know. So, for instance, um, I met a beautiful woman. Her name is Josie, and Josie is an importer and exporter of fabric. And, in fact, she has made me two shirts that are authentic uh, African shirts. I mean, these are the real McCoy, not the kind that you would get in a store. (laughs) Right. And, in fact, they're so intricate and so beautiful, I've never worn them. But I, but I keep them as a reminder that this woman who, when I visited her home, she, she exalted her husband, even though at that point he was unemployed. But she exalted him. The children exalted their parents and were respectful uh, to their parents and really did not speak unless spoken to. Kind of remind you of some of the old school stuff. Remember? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I grew up. I grew up under that that rule. Yes, and so absolutely, did I. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, so I, I have a, I have, yes. I. Can I interrupt you with a question? Absolutely. Um, at what point did did it? Um hit you or you came to this realization that you needed to do something? Ah, that's an excellent question. So here's the answer. Um, One of the activities that we did, and uh, this would have been on a Saturday, um, we had – uh, the, the church actually arranged what they called a, a kind of a cultural exchange where we mm-hmm. had an opportunity to uh, speak to the youth and the youth would be able to ask questions. And so it was during one of those exchanges that um, we were able, and when I say we, me and uh, Paul Davis, uh, we were able to actually sit with someone outside of that forum, and she hit us with the question that I wake up to every morning and that I go to bed with every night. And that question was, you've seen all the things that we've struggled with here. What are you going to do about it? (laughs) Wow. I was devastated. It hit so hard because, again, unawares, I think many times when we travel to uh, other countries, we're still carrying our Western mentality and we have our own projection on what we're going to do and how they're going to receive us. And we're always going in the giving mode of we're going to share Jesus Christ and we're going to, in music, we're going to praise and worship, you know, Jesus Christ. But that question is like Serena Williams returning back a serve and acing it. (laughs) Because, Because what it said is it, it really put the ball back on our side of the court. And and I want to say this, and this is not a, a criticism because we had 18 people there, but I will tell you this, that out of the 18 people who were a part of that original trip, mm-hmm. only three of us have done anything outside of that first trip. I I, I would, wow. I, that, that's just the truth. That's just the truth. Right. So I, I, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. It hit Paul like a, a ton of bricks. And to, you know, really answer your question, we, on the plane back, uh, the plane ride back, which, by the way, is about 18 to 20 hours, 
<laughs> um, <laughs> Paul and I sat next to each other, and we just started to have um, a, a, a come to Jesus moment, really. And what was what had happened, and this is why I know that this is of God, is because Paul had wanted to do something in the realm of youth education. I, on the other hand, um, had received uh, this vision from the Lord. This is several years ago, or several years before that trip. And I was in a worship service, and out of nowhere, I, I, I tell you the truth, I heard this voice just say, thirst no more. And I had no clue of what that meant <laughs> as, mm. as far as I was concerned. Um, one of my favorite passages of Scripture is John 4, you know, and that's where, um, you know, Jesus has the encounter with the Samaritan woman. And in that, you know, Jesus encountered her at a well. And, you know, she was in preparation to offer him a drink. But we know the story. Jesus was really the drink offering for her. Yes. And I said, well, okay, so, Lord, are we talking about uh, we're going to actually do something with water? And the Lord responded back saying, this is not about water. This is about any kind of thirst that people have. So if it's a thirst for education, if it's a thirst for employment, if it's a thirst for me, talking about the Lord, if it's a thirst for anything, I'm going to give you the vehicle in which to quench that thirst. And so on that plane ride, he uh, Paul talked about his vision for youth education, and I talked about this thing, and on that plane, we decided that we were going to start a nonprofit and it would have Thirst No More in the name. That's how it started. <laughs> so, amen. 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 Uh, I was trying to slow down just in case you wanted to interject a question or comment. <laughs> amen. No, I'm fine. What about you, Reverend Ray? You all no, be good. quiet. Again, everyone, you, <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I, I'm listening. Again, everyone, you listen to what Chris and Speak Talk Radio. Really, Hey, maybe we just want to welcome you to the broadcast. Those that are over, that are listening from overseas, thank you. Thank you for listening to the archives. This is Friday Night Joy. We're talking to the young man, calling him Evangelist Mac. Amen. And uh, he's talking about uh, his experience, his testimony. Amen. Uh, in the name of his nonprofit organization, of course, it's called Thirst No More. Amen. Uh, I don't see the website. Do you have a website? Um, um, we uh, we actually do. Uh, the website is www. dot thirst no more c o r p. dot org. All right, give me two, one more time. I promise. <laughs> okay, it is www. dot thirst no more corp. C O R P dot org. Okay, so uh, when well, that's the website, we are going to probably, we definitely going to post it, post it on Facebook page also. Uh, we would like to support, like to support this ministry and everything. You can get in contact with them there on the website and uh, just send them some love and everything. This young man and the, and the, young, the people that he's working with are doing great things in the ministry. So we definitely want to keep them in our prayers. At this time, we're going to turn everything back over to you, Reverend Pat. Okay, praise God. Praise God. And um, my question is, um, is there information on that website about how people can um, make monetary contributions to the organization? There absolutely is. Um, um, I want to tell our audience that um, we, um, 
were officially uh, incorporated uh, in the state of Maryland by the IRS uh, as a 501c3 nonprofit in uh, 2009. And um, since 2009, we have been able to do some uh, major things based on the generosity of people like probably the ones that are listening to this uh, broadcast tonight. Um, We have uh, received no help from the government or even non-governmental organizations. We don't uh, receive anything from any foundational grants. Honestly, uh, both Reverend Ray and uh, Reverend Pat, uh, what we do is we tell our story, and we have been blessed monetarily uh, beyond our wildest imaginations. So um, I, I do have to take this moment to just thank you both for giving our organization a forum in which to share. And um, definitely the information is on the site, um, so you'll be able to contact us. Uh, we, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. And that information is there. And um, for those who uh, are maybe afraid of doing um, electronic transfers, uh, you can even reach us by mail if you want to uh, give a donation or if you want to just share with us. Um, and uh, really quickly, that is at Thirst No More Corporation, and that's P.O. Box 19701. Baltimore, Maryland, 21225. You want to repeat that? I do. Um, Again, it would uh, be to Thirst No More Corporation, P.O. Box 19701, Baltimore, Maryland, 21225. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So you want me to continue on? Uh, is there something? Uh, yes. I mean, if you have more that you 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 want to add about you know what 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 you do, absolutely. Okay, certainly. So um, I'll try to just sum it up. Um, we started out specifically as an organization that would deal with community development. Um, in developing nations, as you mentioned in the broadcast at the beginning. Um, But uh, somewhere in our journey, uh, we realized that you can't just take care of one thing and still leave Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria exposed. Mm -hmm. So we, we started to investigate two other areas, outside of the international uh, thing that we were already doing. So the the first thing that we decided to do, well, if we're going to take care of basically the uttermost parts of the earth, then we better come back in and at least take care of Jerusalem. So um, <laughs> we started <laughs> – so we started to uh, do some things which we – put under our umbrella, we call it the UEB, um, uh, and um, that UEB would actually uh, deal with community things. So, for instance, in Prince George's County, for years we were able to connect with Suitland High School and specifically their performing arts program, and we sponsored or uh, supported uh, many uh, concerts for those students in which uh, name, you know, uh, uh, nationally known artists would come to the school in order to not only give concerts but also do a little bit of mentoring to the performing arts people. Um, But then we, we decided to step out and really go into the community, and we did this in Baltimore where we started to feed the homeless. 
And I think we started at about uh, just about a year and a half ago, and um, that has been very exciting. And what has happened mm-hmm. is that many churches have actually come and partnered with us in that effort. And if I can plug um, a couple of them, um, because I think they might be listening. So we got uh, mm-hmm. major support from Infinity Church Baltimore. Um, and so that was uh, the starting point. But then we got more support from Upper Room Worship Center. Uh, and then we got another supporter uh, from a church called Grace Beyond the Walls. And mm-hmm. um, and then, of course, a conglomerate of others. But those three uh, have been the most consistent. And so... Um, and we would just come together, we would give them a gospel message, we would feed them, we would give them clothes, and um, that has been very successful. Um, and we're at the point now where uh, we're in a little bit of a transition with that particular program where I, I think that the ultimate goal, we're still kind of planning it out, but possibly to be able to get a facility where we can have access to a kitchen and and more space and be able to do what we're doing now on a a larger scale. A larger scale, absolutely. Yes. Um, Absolutely. Yes. Um, We also, right around this time, this was also um, when things were uh, taking place in Haiti. And you know the the Haitian our Haitian brothers and sisters were dealing with uh, natural disaster uh, devastation, and uh, Thirst No More Corporation was able to partner with uh, New Song Bible Fellowship Church in order oh, to amen. raise raise funding to be able to uh, purchase or oh, actually rent uh, one of those long trucks to take all these. Uh, donated items, and those donated items were then sent to Harvest, uh, what is it, uh, Harvest Church International in Florida, and from Harvest Church International, they were then shipped over into Haiti. And so we, we branched out so that basically we would cover the international developing nations, we would cover the community uh, uh, development right here at home, and then deal with disaster relief. And in fact, uh, just this year, um, we were able to promote my daughter to be the coordinator for those type of things. So right now, the the, the hottest thing that's going on is uh, over in the Philippines again, and the Philippines has been hit by typhoons on several occasions. And wow. we have addressed yes. those with um, fundraising uh, concerts in order to be able to support our friends in that region. But the disaster thing can go anywhere. It can be in the United States or anywhere. Um, so those are the, the three right. components. And lastly, and then I really will shut down and uh, let you all cap off the program, uh, Paul and myself, have recently joined an effort in Baltimore. This is brand new. It's fresh, everybody. Um, The effort is called Baltimore Matters, and Baltimore Matters is a nonprofit that was birthed out of the the, uh, recent riots that took place in Baltimore City. And it's it's a conglomerate of for-profit people, just regular individuals and nonprofits that are just saying, hey, we're taking off our leadership caps and we're coming into this situation to be able to uh, address the needs of the uh, citizens in Baltimore City. So I'm saying that to say that even on tomorrow, we will be, uh, a small group of us will be going out to actually do surveys in the city just to find out what's really happening and what are the people really 
say and what do they really need and how do they feel about uh, their political representation, how do they feel about their church representation, what are their concerns, are they, you know, with employment, is it more personal at home, all these kind of things. But I think it's going to eventually um, uh, go in the direction of trying to marry elderly brothers and sisters with the youth um, mm-hmm. so that maybe, for instance, that we would take young people and the young people would go to some of the senior citizen facilities and volunteer. In that way, it takes the uh, relationship from one of fear to one of communion and union. And and so we haven't worked out all the details, but I just had to throw that out. Um, and the Baltimore Matters uh, effort is uh, being led by Pastor Larry Thompson, who is the pastor of Upper Room Worship Center. So I just want to get that out. Praise God. That that's that sounds exciting and um you know, um if there's um any church pastors that may be listening to the to the broadcast and you are in that Baltimore area and um because you know, I think it is wise not to reinvent the wheel. If some if the wheel is in, invented then you can just then jump in and utilize the fact that it's already in motion. And you guys are actually doing this. And um, and for a lot of churches, a lot of churches, there are churches that are doing outreach to the homeless in very small ways. But if we come together, and um and 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 connect um what we do uh then we can make a greater impact in our com- in our communities so if you want to find out more information uh about thirst no more corporation we're going to be putting that information out on our facebook page and you'll be able to uh, find out how you can contact um, Evangelist Mac and his um, his co-founder Paul. Glory to God! And just be a part of this this wonderful work uh, that they are doing. Praise God! I want to thank Praise you so God. much for being on the air tonight. Uh, it has been a blessing. In fact, as you were talking, I was thinking of uh, someone who um, has done uh, homeless ministry for women. You may even know her, um, um, Jacqueline Younger. She used to work at Back to Basics as yes, the administrator I know her. for a while. Yeah, yes. so she continued to do this thing, and she's doing an event. God has led her to open up a boutique for women who are returning back to work who were homeless. And so she's been able to even get some department stores to uh, donate, you know, brand-new clothing. So she, it's high-end stuff that she's doing. She's doing designer clothes because she wants the women to feel how God feels about them. Amen. You know, so often, so often, you know, uh, people will give away things that they don't want and stuff that's not in, you know, but she is opening up something and just giving them top-of-the-line clothing and brand new things, you know, and designer clothing. So uh, that's kind of exciting. So that there, there's a kickoff going on in September 12th, and I'll send you some information um, uh, on that uh, as well. Um, Please do. Um, okay. Yeah, Evangelist Mac. So I like that, Evangelist Mac. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Amen. Hey, Reverend Pat. To God. Yes. Hey, Reverend Pat, can I can I uh, say one other thing? Um, and I yes. promise I'll be very quick. Um, just to the audience, um, I know that many times that um, when nonprofits or churches come on, um, you know, 
people are always thinking about do, uh, donations, uh, you know, with money. Um, and, of course, we'll never refuse money. But um, there are specific needs that we have that um, may not necessarily re- require money. Um, what we are, are doing right now, we are focusing on two areas of, of being able to support. One of those areas is with laptops and other uh, uh, technology that can go to developing areas. And another uh, thing is with um, what we call boreholes. And a borehole is uh, just a centralized uh, water unit that can be placed in villages so that uh, the villagers don't have to walk miles and miles in order to get clean water. So those are two things that are at the the top of our list. One, the borehole would require finances, but with the laptops, what I would uh, encourage our audience, anybody who's listening, if they have access to um, corporations that donate that kind of equipment in good condition, um, we will take it. I, I, I currently have uh, 56 laptops that are scheduled to go to a place called Chiquamula in Guatemala to support uh, youth education in that area. So I just want to throw that out there. And lastly, okay. uh, just as an encouragement for the audience is that um, even as you were talking, Reverend Pat, uh, you, you know, what you really were saying is that uh, people are given a vision. And I just want to encourage everybody to trust their vision and in some cases really don't share that vision to everybody because everybody's not going to understand the God vision. Because Amen. The God vision is always peculiar. It never makes sense. I, you know, we, when we had our vision, the first thing that me and Paul experienced were people talking about, wow, two African Americans going over to the Congo? And so, you know, they couldn't understand it. But God's vision was able to not only have us go abroad, but to bring it back home so that we're fully vested, whether it's overseas or right at home. And I just want people to know Amen. that, it, you know, when God when God speaks it, you, you don't really need any other confirmation if you know his voice. Then Amen. He, then, then he will give you the direction. He'll do you like uh, Jeremiah. If you think you can't speak, he'll give you the words to say, and he will bring Glory the people God. into your atmosphere, and they will be primed and ready to be able to support you and love you and encourage you. I just had to get that out because I think many times we're suppressed and we think we always got to get somebody's permission to do things that God has already allowed, and we need to just trust him to be able to go out there and to be able to share what God is doing, and he will always outgive us and outdo us because that is his will and his way. Amen. Glory to God. That's a great that's a great word to end on. You know, and as you're as you're saying that, um, I was thinking about um a word that the Lord spoke to me uh, probably about maybe four or five years ago that I put in my journal you know, because things that I want to stick with me, I find that if I write them, that they stay with me. Uh, there's a connection that takes place when you're writing, when you write. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the things that the Lord uh, shared with me is that, you know, when he gives you a vision, he's not giving it to you so that you can figure out how is it going to work and and what am i going to do and you know how you know we think that oh how am i going to make this happen and what you know but he's giving us the vision first of all he wants to inspire you he wants to open up he wants to open up your vision 
first of all. But what he is saying to you is that this is what I am going to do. And so from that point that you've been given the vision, then you work on believing, believing that you've heard God and he will order your steps. He will align things, and everything that you need to do, when you need to do it, he will set it up. You don't have to try and make something happen. You don't have to press it. You don't have to try and push through doors or kick down doors. You trust God, and he will order your footsteps. The Holy Spirit will give you divine wisdom. Not man's wisdom, divine wisdom from on high. So praise Amen. God. Thank you so much for your inspiration. Glory to God. Your Whew. testimony. Amen. Yeah. Rem- Amen. Pat. Yes. Rem Rem Pat. Uh yes. I know I keep just chiming in, but let me sum that of what you said because it's so perfect. If you can figure out how to do it. It's you and not God. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Glory to God. That's right. And this way he gets all the glory. He gets all the glory. glory. He does. All the glory. All the glory. So as we close this broadcast, I want to remind you that we've got um, a show coming on tomorrow. A prophetic win will be on at 7 p.m. tomorrow. And you'll be hearing a message from Pastor Paul Morgan of uh, New Generation Ministries in uh, Richmond, uh, Virginia. Glory to God. And then on Sunday, we got Reverend Ray back on, A Week in Review. This is something new that he's been um, doing. And I think it's exciting to kind of review and recap the things that have been going on uh, during the week on the broadcast and around the world. Glory to God. Amen. And to end the week with an encouraging word. Glory to God. Well, actually, Amen. Sunday would be beginning the week with a, uh, an encouraging <laughs> word from the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And so also, Tuesdays, don't forget, Tuesdays we've got um, uh, his Abounding Grace show. Glory to God. And, of course, Thursdays, uh, that's me, Reverend Pat, on Declaring the Finished Work. And that's, that's a 12 noon show. Glory to God. Amen. And then, of course, Friday Night Joy, which you're listening to now. Reverend Ray and friends will be back next week. So we're just uh, excited. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook. All the information about tonight's broadcast and the link to the previous broadcast, part one of the personal testimony, and uh, information about Thirst No More will be out on our Facebook page. So we just thank everyone for listening tonight. I hope that you heard a word that will inspire you. If you go back to that part one, you will hear the condition that my brother had found his life in. Yeah. It looked like yeah. there was no hope. It looked like everything was going downhill for him. But God had another plan. Glory to God. So we can't judge things by the way they look. Our God is so uh, much greater. So much yeah. greater. Reverend Ray, you got something for us? Yeah, real quick, I just want to um, thank the, um, Evangelist Mack. For coming on the air again, man. You are awesome. Thank you for everything that you share. Okay. I'm still looking for that book, man, but we'll talk about that another day. You have definitely been a blessing. Um the the last couple mm-hmm. the last time times I've listened to you even today, even in your closing remarks, because this the radio broadcast is Reverend Pat No. It's a vision. It has a vision. It has a purpose and everything. And um, sometimes you get, at least me in a way, but Pat has, Pat has to remind me. <laughs> she has to remind me, give it over to the Lord. Give it over to the Lord. You know, I'm, I'm constantly uh, uh, trying, to, uh, um, trying to allow God to move it forward 
and everything. And, and sometimes we get in the way of, of the vision that he has given us rather than just let him work those things out. So I thank God for your, your, your message that, and, and yours too, Robin Pat. And um, um, I do want to give a shout out to all our listeners. You know, I, I looked at um, some, the, one of the websites today. We got listeners all across the world um, from Russia to China to the Philippines to, some, to a few through other countries in, in Africa and stuff. So I just want to thank you for listening. Keep on listening. We're only trying to bring you the best uh, of, of, of knowledge, of information, and things to help you in your Christian walk. And we and we thank God for the fact that we even had people receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior through this broadcast so that we know Amen. that we're we being obedient to what God has given us and everything. And this is what this is why we do what we do. It's like Pat, Pat said, it's not about us, but it's about God. God bless. Absolutely. God bless. God bless. So we're going to end the broadcast with He's the Way uh, by it's from a CD by Doc Pearson, No Greater Love. And you can, I, I'm telling you, uh, it's a really it's a really good CD, and actually it's his anniversary CD. So it's got the best of all of the songs that he has produced over over the past ten years through I Am Music Company. It's an independent music label that he owns. He and his wife, glory to God. So support them. Go out to iTunes, purchase this CD, or go out to um, Amazon, glory to God. So we just want to give God all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Good night. Woo!